I wanted to show you how I made this Nerokomi plate using different coloured clay. The first thing that I do is I make some coloured clay using ceramic stains. I weigh out several batches of clay weighing 800 grams each. 800 grams is equivalent to just under 1.8 pounds of clay. So I make several batches because I'm going to make several coloured blocks of clay. I find that the easiest way to stain clay is to dry the clay out first. So what I do is I roll out each batch of 800 grams of clay into a thin slab. Then I slice it up and I put it all on an old baking rack because this will dry it out really quickly. When you're working with dry clay it's important to wear a respirator mask so you don't inhale any dust particles. I put the clay in a thick plastic bag and I crush it with my hands and also with a rolling pin. I want the stain to be 8% of the weight of the clay as I find this creates the nicest colour. So I weigh out 64 grams of ceramic stain and I mix it in with a small amount of water. I mix it carefully to get rid of any of the lumps of stain and then I pour that onto the dried clay. I try to make sure that I get all of the stain out of the container and if there's anything stuck on the base of the container once I've tipped it in I put a small amount of extra water into the plastic box and then just rinse out any of the remaining stain making sure that it all goes onto the clay. I then add an extra bit of water in there just to make sure that there's enough water in the bag to rehydrate the clay, smush it around a little bit and then I seal the bag with a clip I feel the bottom of the bag to make sure that there's no leaks coming out and then I leave the bag overnight to allow the clay to absorb the stain. This is the next day and the clay has become quite nice and rehydrated with the stained water so I just give it an extra squish around just to even out the consistency and you can see that it's quite smooth there. And then what I do is I just snip off one of the corners from the end of the bag and then squeeze it out onto one of my plaster recycling bats or a wedging, a plaster wedging bat. So squeeze it out like you're squeezing out the icing from a piping bag. And I like this way of staining clay just because I find it the least messy way of doing it. Then once I've spread the stained clay out over the plaster bat, I leave it for a little while to, for the water to be absorbed. It doesn't take too long, particularly if the weather is warm and dry, it won't take very long, so it's a good idea to check the clay quite regularly. Once it's firmed up, you can peel it off the plaster bat. That's just some blue clay that I made a little earlier. So I wedge it to get rid of any air bubbles in the clay. One thing that I would recommend before you commit yourself to making any large batches of clay with a particular ceramic stain is to make some test tiles with some smaller quantities of clay like the ones that I've got here. It's a good idea to do that because you want to make sure that the stain looks the right colour because they can look quite different when they've been fired also to check what percentage you want to use in the in the clay and also to make sure that your clay and stains get on with the clear glaze that you're going to use later on once it's been fired. So here are some test tiles that I made using different percentages of stain, checking those out. I made six balls of coloured clay and the smaller one on the end is violet. I used a smaller amount of clay for that one because I didn't have quite so much stain left so I just used a smaller amount of clay. So the first thing that I do is I pat each ball of clay into a brick shape, an oblong brick shape. And what you're going to do is you're going to stack those bricks on top of one another. So they need to be more or less the same size and measurements. So what I do is I make the first one and then I measure it out. That one is just under five inches long. So put it to one side and then I do the same thing with all the other balls of coloured clay, making sure that they're all the same measurements, more or less. Once I've shaped the clay into a brick, what I want to do is just tidy up the bottom edge of the, of the clay. So I use some very thin roller guides and I drag my clay wire through the base and I do it twice just to make sure that the, uh, the clay is separated and then you can lift off the top part and then there's a thin amount of clay on the base there. You can see there's a little air pocket in the clay there. I wouldn't worry too much about that if you see that. That will be compressed out of the clay later on. Any little offcuts of coloured clay like that you can put to one side and reuse later on for a different project. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this particular block into slabs that are 9mm thick. So I'm using my 9mm roller guides and then again just slicing the clay wire through through the block 
and as I say I do it twice because otherwise the, uh, the, the clay can be quite sticky. So lifting it off and then putting that slab to one side and what I would recommend is putting those slabs on a damp cloth because what you want is you want the clay to be really quite moist for when you are assembling the, uh, the Nerokomi plate later on. So I put it to one side on a damp towel and then I just slice up the rest of the block in exactly the same way. So this is what your clay will look like once it's all been sliced up into 9mm sections. So I'm just using an old piece of sheet there and placing my first block down, spraying it with some water so it's nice and wet and then I'm putting my next slab of coloured clay on top. And what I try to do when I'm putting, when I'm stacking the clay slabs is just try and roll it onto the one beneath so that you're trapping as little air as possible between the slabs of clay and then again spraying it because you're going to put another slab on top and it needs to be nice and wet so that they stick to one another. And because I'm going to be making a pattern, a repeating pattern on the plate, it's important to remember the order in which the slabs are being assembled. So I put them in a sequence, a repeating sequence when they're being stacked together. Once all of the slabs have been stacked, what I want to do is I want to put the stack on its side and I find the easiest way of doing that is just by putting another piece of sheet on top and then using the sheet to support it as you're moving the slabs because it's important that the shape of the stack doesn't get distorted too much. You want it to remain as, as square as, it, as you can keep it. So just using the sheet to support it as you manoeuvre the stack around. And then even though I made a bit of an effort to make sure that the blocks were the same size, you can see that the edge of the stack is quite rough and ready. So the first thing that I do is I just tidy that up to make sure it's nice and square. So again, I'm using my 9mm guides and I'm going to run the clay wire through the bottom of the stack just to tidy up the edges. And I lift it on its side and then peel away the edge that you've just sliced off. It's quite sticky, the clay is quite sticky and it feels a little bit awkward, but as long as you're patient you'll be able to peel it off uh, without, without too much damage. And you can see there that there's a few little air bubbles in there, in spite of the fact that I tried not to get any air bubbles trapped in there. You will get a few little air bubbles trapped in there, but again I wouldn't worry about that because it will be compressed later. So just lifting it onto its side and then just repeating that process of tidying up the other edge of the block. And all of those little offcuts there aren't wasted. I keep them to one side and I use them to make marbled mugs. So there is your prepared stack of coloured slabs all ready to be sliced up. Again, I'm using the 9mm roller guides and I'm going to draw the wire through in the same way, actually, that I did before. Um, it's just that this time, the slab that you peel off is not going to be an offcut. This is the actual clay that you're going to make the Nerokomi plate from. So just peel it off really carefully and then put it to one side. And I'm going to repeat that process of slicing the, the block up and making some nice stripy slabs. Now that I have my slabs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those into strips, coloured strips. So I'm measuring out one centimetre on the top edge of the slab because I want each of the strips to be one centimetre wide. Using my straight edge and just cutting that strip. Again, I put the strip to one side and leave it on a damp cloth because I want it to stay soft. And again, repeat that process with the whole of the slab and with all of the slabs that you have made. And then this is what it should look like once you've cut the slab slabs into strips. I've got a spare slab there, I realised I didn't need that one so I'm keeping that one as a spare. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bisque plate as a mould for the Nerokomi plate. So I'm just putting it on a clean piece of old sheet and I'm drawing around it just so that I've got a guide of how big I want the, the slab to be. 
Spray it with some water to make sure the sheet is nice and wet. You can start by placing the strips anywhere that you like on the, on the sheet, but I find that the best place to start for me is just with the first strip in the middle of the plate. And then really it's just a case of sort of assembling the other strips in a, in a pattern next to the first one. And when I'm putting the strip in place, I line it up so that it's right up against the first strip, but you don't need to compress it. At this point you're not sort of squishing the, the strips to up against each other. Just position them so they're right up against each other and that they're aligned in the right way. And I find the easiest way of doing this, if you're making a repeated pattern, what I do is I find one particular colour in the pattern, like for example yellow. I'll keep an eye on the yellow and I'll make sure that they are going in the right direction because it's quite easy, I find at least anyway, when I'm doing this to kind of lose track of the pattern and then it's not until you've actually assembled the whole thing you stand back and you realise that the pattern's gone a bit off. So what I do is I'll just keep an eye on one of the blocks of colour and make sure that it's doing the right thing and then you know that all of them are doing the right thing. So I'm just staggering the strips in one direction for the first few and then I change that and I stagger them again in the opposite direction so it creates a sort of a, I guess it's like a herringbone pattern, I think that's what they call it, isn't it, herringbone? So you can see that the pattern is beginning to emerge there, that sort of zigzag kind of pattern. And then once the whole area is covered, you know, the circle that I drew earlier on, once that's all covered, what I do is I put another clean sheet on top and then spray it with water. And then you can use a, a rubber rib or that's a platter tool that I'm using there, a plastic platter tool. And I'm just running the platter tool across the surface of the wet sheet. And I'm applying a bit of pressure it's not a huge amount of pressure, but it's enough pressure to compress the clay underneath. What I don't want to do is distort the shape of the clay underneath, but I do want to compress it so that those little blocks of clay stick together. So you just need to keep running, running the rib over the surface until you can see that they are beginning to join up. And then you can peel off the sheet. And then you can see that all those little separate blocks of coloured clay have now been bonded together to form one slab of coloured clay. Now you do need to repeat the process on the other side just to make sure that they're compressed evenly. So just putting another clean sheet down and then just turn it over carefully. Now if you peel that sheet off you will see on the other side that it does need to be compressed on the other side too because there are still quite a few gaps there so it's really just a matter of repeating the process on the other side. Now I want the top side of the plate to be the other side of the slab so I'm going to turn it over just placing a sheet on there carefully so that it doesn't leave any creases in the clay and that's a paper template that I made using the plate. It, the, the paper template is about a centimetre wider than the plate because I want the coloured clay slab to be just a bit bigger than the, the bisque mould that I'm going to use. So I'm just cutting it out carefully with my clay knife and then just peeling the excess away which of course as before can be used to make other marbled projects. Now what you need to do now is you need to get the, the clay slab onto the plate. I found that the best way of doing that is to slide one of those flexible chopping boards underneath and then use that to pick up the slab and then just sort of gradually inch it onto the plate. I find that's the best way of getting the slab onto the plate without damaging it. If you pick the slab up 
it can stretch the slab or if you put the plate on the slab and then flip it over you can end up with marks on the plate it's just not ideal so I just find the easiest way of doing it is to like I say use that bendy chopping board and then just slide it on slowly once it's on the plate you can move it around a little bit without stretching the clay so just get it into place then once the clay is a little bit firmer what I do is I tidy up the edge of the plate using a shredder I didn't film this part I forgot but you just tidy it up using a shredder and then on on the edge and then I use a rubber rib after I've used the shredder just to get rid of any texture that's been left behind and just to smooth out the edges and then what I do once the clay is actually firm enough to lift I lift it off the bisque plate mould and I put some cellophane, you can see I've put some cellophane between the bisque mould and the plate because I don't want the plate to dry out too quickly. If it's sitting on the bisque, the bisque will draw out too much of the water too quickly so I put it on some cellophane just to slow the drying process down because what can happen with Nerocomi is if it dries out too quickly the uh, pieces of clay, coloured clay, will start separating and cracks will start appearing uh, at the points where the coloured, different coloured clays have been joined. So I always dry Nerocomi pottery out as slowly as I can. One way that I do that is by painting a bit of wax resist onto the edge of the plate when it's still greenware. I let the wax resist dry out and then I wrap the whole thing in cellophane and put a rice bag on top to stop it from bowing or warping as it dries and I leave it like that for a good two weeks before I start loosening the cellophane and letting it dry out enough so that it can be bisque fired and once it's bisque fired I apply clear glaze and here it is coming out of the glaze fire it was fired at cone 6 on the bottom shelf and you can see that the colours have developed really nicely I think if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.